Hey, this is Kevin from Blender Binge. In this video, we're going to be going over the simple deform modifier and why you would use it. Ready? Let's go. Okay, the simple deform modifier has been around for quite a while. It's nothing new to 2.8, but it's pretty useful. Now, to show you the simple deform modifier, I'm going to go ahead and create a object that is going to be a little bit better to show you this thing with. So I'm going to start by just stretching this guy out. All right, so I'm going to stretch this guy up a little bit. And I think I'm going to go in and add some add some uh some loop cuts to him. All right, just uh just manually here. All right. And I'll hit tab and get back out of there now. And then I think I'm just going to move him up. All right, this is just so you can see this better. So now I have this kind of little tower over here. And I'm going to go over to Modifier. Okay, So this is little wrench icon over here. So for those who have used Blender before, I'm in Blender 2.8 Alpha 2, one of the later builds. And they have taken all the icons that used to be up here and moved them down the side. So just know that going in. Okay, So the wrench is still Modify. I'm going to go Modifier. And I'm going to say simple deform. And we see that this is simple, simply deforming my object with a twist modifier. So we have twist, we have bend, we have taper, and we have stretch. And these are all controlled by these parameters down here. So I'll start with twist. And I'll show you right now it's twisting in this weird way, okay, because it's using, it's, it's at a 45 degree angle, okay, you can slide this, and you can go to zero, and then all the way out, and it's twisting on this axis. So right now it's twisting around the x-axis, so it's taking this and twisting it kind of down this way, all right? You can change the axis, so say the y-axis, and now we're twisting down the y-axis, which is this way. Or... The z-axis, which gives us this nice twist. We're going from the top down, so we're twisting this way. And being that I added in a bunch of cuts before, you can see now that we can twist and get this really nice kind of twisted geometry. Okay, this is a very quick way to get this kind of thing. So if you're making kind of, you know, if you're making a screw or you're making a drill bit or something, this is probably a cool way to go ahead and do it or some really cool architecture All right. twist is good we also have bend okay so right now I'm bending on this axis on the Z axis and I'll take that out so you can see I'm I'm doing a bend alright so I could change these axis and get different bends alright so here I'm bending I'm bending on the on the X axis so I'm bending that way z-axis which we were on and y-axis which goes opposite x okay or opposite or tangent to perpendicular whichever okay so you can control it by changing the angle All right taper will taper your object based on whichever axis you choose okay so in this case Taper is probably best on the z-axis because we get the best, I don't know, depends on what you want to do. Okay, so we can go negative, right, positive, and we have limits. So you can see limits will be your bottom and your top limit. All right, so you can use these limits to shape how much of a deformity you're getting in your object if that makes sense. And the limits work on lots of things. Twist, same thing. Okay, limits work on twist as well. Limits work on taper, which we were just on. They work on bend. All right. And they work on stretch. Okay. And we also have the ability to go and lock certain axes. So in this case, if I'm on stretch and I lock the x-axis, right, I'm only going to be operating on one of these axes. 
So you can see it's it's not tapering in this way. So if you see it's not stretching this in. If I take that off, you'll see that stretches all around. If I lock the x-axis, it only goes on one axis. Same with y. Lock the y-axis, it only goes on that. And this takes some playing around with to really understand. Okay, the more you play with this, the more you're going to see what this is actually doing. But this modifier gives you a lot of different options here. Okay, and we can also go on uh, axis origin. So axis origin is really cool and it lets us take another object and use that to control how much or where the deformation is happening. So if I were to add in a let's add in an empty alright an empty and I'll just do a plain axis empty okay so it sits in there now you can see it's just this little kind of crosshair thing okay so if I went to my back to this guy and I say axis origin and I choose the empty it's now going to control it by where my empty is so this object here if I move this object around wherever this object is is going to control my deformation and it's gonna it, and it'll work on any one of these so twist you can see oops let me go to empty move the empty around and you can see that where I move this guy up and down it's moving twisting okay I can move him out and it'll it'll move the deformation not the easiest thing to control but you can see that you can do some really cool effects work if you wanted to animate this guy and then you can kind of animate the movement of this thing doing whatever you want once you kind of get a feel for what this thing is doing to your object. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's controlling this modifier with another object. And if you don't like that, you can always take it off. All right. And then you can use that with limits as well. Okay, so I go back and I change that you see that this part isn't twisting at all but it's twisting up here so there's a lot of options that you can do with this modifier and I, I'm just gonna repeat myself here <laughs> that it really does take some playing around with to kind of get a feel for what this is really doing but once you start getting a feel for it you can use this to create some really interesting geometry some really interesting objects okay and like other um, modifiers you can add in a vertex group so for example, I like this twist. I use this for twisting quite often because it's very useful for that. Okay, if I were to twist this thing around pretty heavily here, I can also say, all right, instead of limits, I can just say twist on just a few of these points. So I can go ahead into uh, hit tab. All right, I can hit uh, deselect, so alt A. Then let's just say I want to just operate on these guys up here. Okay, so I can select those, hit Control G, assign to a new group. And now, if I say vertex group, I go to group. Okay, now my twist is only happening up here. All right, I'm going to hit Tab so you can see it. None of this is affected, only this is affected. So all of my twisting is only happening right there. Okay, it's only happening on the group that I just chose, it's not happening on the group that I didn't choose. And if I don't like that, I can always just hit X and delete it. And I'm back here. So this is a very, very cool tool to use. And you can always just apply it as a shape or apply it. And then it's, it's solid and then you can't do anything else to it. But like everything else, if you want to work kind of procedurally, which means you, you always want to be able to go back in and, and, um, and change things, you can leave this on the object and then always go back in and change it. Or you can animate this guy and, you know, play around. So that's it. That's the basics of this simple deform modifier. It's useful, but like I said, it, it takes going in and playing around. It's, it's, um, it, it's not super intuitive right when you begin, but as you do it more, you'll understand more of what it's doing to your object. And it works differently on, on different geometries. So you'll you'll get a feel for it when you go in and play with it, okay? So hopefully you got something out of this video. You learned the simple deform modifier and uh, what you can do with it. And go in and play. Hit like, subscribe, 
share it, hit that little bell notification so you see when I make more videos, and uh, go learn. All right, see ya.